In today's video, we're going to be cooking the shootout at the Oka Corral Burger from Season 1, Episode 9 of Bob's Burgers, titled Spaghetti Western and Meatballs. I have worked too hard to get a this event, so you'll be nice to Frond, and you'll make spaghetti and meatballs! No. Yes. No. Yes. Fine, but I'm gonna half-ass it. Yay. Today we're making a fried vegetable burger, specifically okra. What is okra? I'm not exactly sure. We all know it's a vegetable, but what's it about? What's its story? But I do know one thing, that if you fry anything, it's most likely good. So let's get our game faces on, get the ingredients out, and then we can start making this burger of the day. I don't have time for this! It's ingredients time. Some fresh okra, green tomatoes, garlic and onion powder, some ground up white pepper. It's a little bit more spicy. Buttermilk and some Duke's mayo. Fresh dill for our ranch dressing, a head of Boston lettuce, and cornmeal and white flour for frying. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some homemade ranch sauce. It's gonna be very simplistic. There's probably some better ways to do this, but as per usual, the recipe book has simplified it. It's just gonna be a combination of buttermilk, mayonnaise, and fresh dill chopped up. I'm sure there's a better way of removing the fresh dill from the stems, but what's the fun in Googling it? I don't know, lasagna. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I had figured out when I was younger how to make this quick and easy ranch dressing because in my opinion, it's way tastier than the Hidden Valley stuff you get at the stores. The only danger is once you make it yourself, you'll never want to go back. A good problem to have though, I suppose. As you mix the sauce, you can adjust the consistency by adding a little bit more mayo or buttermilk. I like to add a little garlic powder as well. Just like that, we have a ranch dressing that's good enough to put on everything, even though you really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okra is a weird slimy vegetable with a sweet earthy taste unlike anything else. Kind of like a zucchini, but not really at the same time. I've only had it fried growing up, but I do imagine there are other ways to cook it as well. And I guess you could eat it raw if you wanted, but I don't know how I feel about that. No, uh, I don't think so. The veggies are on their way to Preparation Nation, so it's only fitting to start going to town on this green tomato. I know tomatoes are technically a fruit, but I reject your opinion and substitute my own. We also need to start working on our frying station, which will just be a combination of buttermilk and a mixture of flour and cornmeal. Arguably the most important step with this burger is making sure we have enough flavor in our frying batter. It's not an exact science, but it can leave you with one shot at perfection. There's only gonna be two shots. Me shooting you, and then me drinking this shot of whiskey. Back to our frying mixture, we want a lot more flour than we do cornmeal, but we want a good mixture of both. This will give us a nice base for our dredge, and will also give us nice texture. Our ground white pepper is going to be the star. But with every good batter, we need more flavor than we think, so here comes the garlic powder and flaky salt. Grab a spoon or fork and really mix it up. Dad, can I see that fork for a minute? Um, here? Thank you, and I just want to... Hey, 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 hey! Louise had the right idea. We want to make sure everything is sufficiently mixed. Don't be afraid to really get in there. We want about 94% effort on this one. Anything less and we can say goodbye to our Michelin star. Any more and we're looking at a worldwide catastrophe. But as I talk complete nonsense, we've already started on dredging our veggies through a mixture of buttermilk. Repeat this step with our other slices of green tomato before moving on to the okra, which is more of the same, but I still want to show the process because okra rarely gets the love it deserves. It's just very underappreciated and rarely used in recipes, at least that's my experience. But like with most ingredients, it has its time and place. Now let's repair our patty. Best part right here, Gene. Did someone say meat time? Yeah, it's time to form our patty using our beef blend that we got from the store and transform it into a well-seasoned machine or ball with a simple combo of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Burgers are one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it sandwiches, which I say ironically since I've been known to put some weird stuff on these burgers throughout the series. However, my burgers are consistent because I keep it simple with how I season the patties. Complexity doesn't always make a dish better, and per usual, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm hungry. All right, we're done, go inside. As you know, cooking burgers is super relaxing to me, but something that is equally as relaxing in my life is being out in nature. I've been trying to make it a habit as someone who works from home 90% of the time to try to get out a lot more throughout the day, regardless of the weather. It doesn't always work out, but I like to think that getting some fresh air and sunlight really keeps me calm, my mind more clear, and generally, I'm less grumpy. 
Yeah, he seemed angry. Frothy. And kind of bloated, right? Mm. Speaking of nature, I used to go camping a lot when I was younger, and I have some of my best memories from those days. One time, I caught a golden trout with my dad after spending five hours trying to do so, and one time I tried making it up to a cave within being at the campsite for five minutes, only to tumble down the hill and significantly hurt myself. And then later that night, while I was recovering, I replaced my hand on the scolding hot fire pit. But when I finally got that s'more in my mouth, it was heavenly. Sometimes I think I let myself get too invested in things going on at my desk, and I need to take myself a little less seriously. Whatever, it's true. You are whack. Even though some of those memories aren't necessarily the happiest when you break them down, I still hold them very dear in my heart because they're powerful and I think I felt very free during them. I was free to take risks and I paid for them. I think that's why I like to wing recipes while I cook a lot of the time. I like to put a little pressure on myself to create, but also to have the ability to mess up. We are not messing up this green tomato frying job though, and it's looking spectacular. This is all about jokes from your stupid joke book. You've insulted jokes for blokes for the last time. Getting a nice crisp crust is what this recipe is all about. We're on our way to home plate, the final score, the big enchilada, we just need a fry, baby. We need to finish up our tomatoes, repeating the process with each slice. Check the temperature again, and then move on to the okra. Since the okra is very small, they will probably take a lot less time to start to brown. It might end up a race against time as you're frying the pieces in large batches because by the time you get them all in, they are probably ready to get taken out. With everything fried up and smelling great, we can start on building our burger. Start with the bottom bun. Drizzle and spread out our homemade dressing. Throw down a decent amount of our lettuce. Follow that up with our juicy patty. Top it with some fried tomatoes. Then drizzle some more dressing. And then complete it with a top bun. Oh, and don't forget the okra. Never forget the okra. Well, what do you think? I'm so excited to try this one. It smells, it looks, it just, it just, screams perfection. I'm always a little bit hit or miss when it comes to frying things, but I think we nailed it today. It's gonna get a little bit messy, but I don't even care. First, let's dip one of these fried okra bites into the ranch and give it a shot. Oh, it's so good. Okra has such a unique flavor. It's time to take a bite of this juicy kick-ass burger. Let's, let's eat. Oh my gosh, this one is amazing. I'm going to give this burger a 10 out of 10. Best burger I've ever made. One of the best burgers I've ever eaten in my entire life. I'm so glad it turned out the way it did. And the okra, the fried okra. So quick question for you guys. If you had to choose between fried okra, fried mushrooms, and fried pickles, what would it be? Thanks for feasting with me today. And please subscribe if you liked what you saw.